Well, greetings, church family. Today's daily Bible reading had us in Amos chapter 5. And what we see in verses 1 through 15 is, Seek the Lord for life. Remember that Amos has been speaking to the northern kingdom of Israel uh, during the years 763 to 755 BC. And that's the northern ten tribes who, of course, broke away from the throne of David, which was in Judah and Benjamin in the south. And Amos has already prophesied judgment against the foreign nations in chapters 1 and 2. Now he's in the midst of pronouncing God's judgment on Israel for their wickedness, chapters 3 through 6. In chapter 4, Amos had prophesied how the people of Israel had not only been wicked, but failed to repent of their wickedness. We see this in verses 6, 8, 9, 10, and 11 with the common phrase, the identical phrase, yet you have not returned to me, declares Yahweh over and over again. You not have returned to me, yet you not have returned to me, yet you not have returned to me, yet you not have have not returned to me, declares Yahweh. And now Amos is prophesying that Israel is a fallen nation indeed, and yet there is still hope. Three times in Amos 5, 1 through 15, we see Yahweh commanding the people through this prophet to seek the Lord that they may live. Verse 4, seek me that you may live. Verse 6, seek Yahweh that you may live. Verse 14, seek good and not evil that you may live. And in the course of this instruction, God exhorts the people to not look to anyone but him for help, not even the formerly great and holy locations in Israel, such as Bethel and Gilgal and Beersheba. In verses 8 and 9, we see Amos chiming in to declare the greatness of God, highlighting his sovereignty, his power, his control, his supreme uniqueness as the only great I am. And Amos also adds in verse 10 a very likely reference to himself and the other prophets as ones who reproved the people at the gate, who spoke with integrity, and who were thus hated by fellow Israelites. After all, those who think they're righteous hate being rebuked for their sin. And indeed, as we see in verses 11 through 13, the people had become quite wicked and were very self-righteous. They went through all the religious motions and thus didn't think they needed to be admonished for anything. However, the people would turn from their evil and seek good, that is, seek the Lord who is good and does good and obey him. Well, Israel might find favor with God. You'll see the phrase there, remnant of Joseph, in verse 15. That's a reference to Ephraim, and remember Ephraim as one of those half-tribes uh, named after one of the sons of Joseph, Manasseh and Ephraim. Ephraim was often used in the prophets to refer to Israel. Then we get to chapter verses 16 through 27, anticipate the day of the Lord. Both Yahweh and Amos remark on the stated desire of Israel to have the Lord return to them and be among their midst. They thought, yeah, that sounds great, the people of Israel did. However, in the condition they were in, wicked unredeemed, unrepentant, having God return to dwell among them would be disastrous for the people. In verses 18 through 20, the day of the Lord, the final judgment of God on this earth, culminating in his wrath in hell forever, will not be a good day for those who remain in their sin. And though the Israelites were worshiping God with their lips and sacrifices, verses 21 through 23, they were not acting in a just and righteous manner. Verse 24, they were immoral towards the Lord, unrighteous, and they treated their fellow man with contempt, being unjust. In verses 25 through 27, we see Yahweh rightly accusing Israel of hypocritical idolatry from the very beginning. The first generation of Israel in the wilderness provided Yahweh with sacrifices at times. Exodus 24, 4 and 5, Numbers 7, 1. Only turn around and worship idols as well. And they're actually given names here. Sekuth, your king. Now, one reading in the Hebrew is the tabernacle of Moloch. Um, another reading is Sekuth or Adar, the Assyrian god of war. Um, I, either way, that's an idol, and that's the point. Acts, of course, shows this to be tabernacle of Molech, and that then is the right understanding. Kiyun is a plural noun that refers to idols, especially the star god, as we see here in the verse, and the star god would have been Saturn. Well, the consequence of their hypocritical idolatry, that first generation had taken their idols with them into the desert. And they had secretly, some of them did, worship those idols or worship them even in their heart, while at the same time carrying on with this outward worship according to the Mosaic Covenant of the Lord. Well, that consequence of hypocritical idolatry, that's judgment on Israel through capture and exile. Damascus is named here. Damascus, of course, was the capital of Aram. Beyond Aram was none other than Assyria.
and indeed Assyria as a tool of God's judgment would one day take Israel into exile. Well, a couple of uh, principles and application that we can look at here. Uh, those who believe in the Lord are those who seek the Lord and those who are indeed looking forward to his return with joy and not despair. And the question is, do you seek the Lord? If you remain in your sin, you will never seek him. There's no such thing as an unbeliever who genuinely seeks the Lord. Romans 3, 10 through 11, as it is written, there is none righteous, not even one. There is none who understands. There's none who seeks for God. The only genuine seekers of God are those who already know him as master, who have been regenerated by the Holy Spirit, thus immediately repented from sin, trusted in the person and work of Jesus alone for salvation. If you have not done so, turn to Christ this very day. As Hebrews eleven six says, Without faith it is impossible to please him. For he who comes to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of those who seek him. And then, as a Christian, you turn from your sin, trust in Jesus Christ for salvation. We are to seek the Lord every day. Colossians 3, 1 through 4, Therefore, if you have been raised up with Christ, keep seeking the things above where Christ is, seated at the right hand of God. Set your mind on the things above, not on the things that are on earth. For you have died and your life is hidden with Christ in God. When Christ, who is our life, is revealed, then you also will be revealed with him in glory. And speaking of which, do you anticipate that revelation of Christ, his return to earth, the the day of the Lord, the Lord's return. Do you, do you anticipate it with joy or with despair? Are you living in such a manner as to be unashamed at the coming of Christ? First Thessalonians 5, 23 and 24 says this, now may the God of peace himself sanctify you entirely and may your spirit and soul and body be preserved complete without blame at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Faithful is he who calls you, he also will bring it to pass. This has been Amos chapter 5, and I hope you have a great day.